Ambition. I think everyone who creates anything on the internet has some kind of desire to achieve something. I think it is true that the occasional person does things not for money, but truth be told, I do not believe that it is anywhere near a quarter of anyone alive right now. Yes, I'm pessimistic about many things. I claim to be more of a realist, but who am I kidding? Where is the line that divides realism from pessimism? Frankly, I think doing things not for money is more probable than people doing things not for views. By which I mean, well, anything. Cutting to the point, Twitter, people want retweets. Reddit, people want upvotes. Facebook, I have no fucking clue because who the fuck gives a shit about Facebook? TikTok, well, I think this is the current platform where people think they can get famous quick. Remember that time in YouTube's history where everyone thought they could just upload a cat video and get a hundred thousand views? Remember when people thought you could upload a video of a kid with a high-pitched voice doing stupid stuff and get a million views? Remember when- okay, point is made. YouTube definitely had that, and I'd be willing to bet that YouTube almost single-handedly brought the concept of things going viral on the internet to the mainstream. People upload things to the internet for others to see, plain and simple. People upload videos to YouTube because they expect people to watch. I'm gonna be honest with anyone watching this video and anyone returning from my previous videos. I upload videos onto YouTube because I want people to watch and because I expect someone will watch somewhere out there. And I say such a thing fully expecting it to be taken out of context. But here's a distinction, I would still make videos if I wasn't uploading them to YouTube publicly because that is exactly what I was doing before uploading videos publicly on youtube.com slash absolute problem. The absolute problem YouTube channel hosted a now deleted EP on its public front, along with basically any video I couldn't send to Discord on its back end. I can't show these videos, but even right now in my video manager I have about 100 videos even though you can only watch like a third of them on the channel right now. But the point I'm making is that fundamentally someone makes an account on YouTube and uploads a video because they intend for someone to watch it. It could be one person, a group of friends, or they could go in expecting their video to surpass, uh, baby shark dance. <sighs> what the fuck happened to YouTube? Okay, enough of the intro. Needy Streamer Overload, or Needy Girl Overdose, as it says on Steam, but it also says Overload, but it says Overdose, and now it's in kind of, kind of, uh, okay, okay. Real quick, why do some games do this? I think I've heard one reason is trademark disputes between different countries, but I highly doubt anyone had a trademark dispute on any of these two names. The game claims to be a multi-ending ADV, which I had to look up because what is an ADV? I honestly thought it was going to be either an obscure-ass format like mini-DV, or it was going to mean adult visuals. Look, don't claim my mind is in the gutter when Steam allows hentai, so perhaps this game had the courtesy to not show anime titties on the thumbnail. Asking Lord Google, it means adventure. Yeah, uh, I feel stupid now, but in my defense, do you ever hear anyone abbreviate adventure as ADV, first person shooter as FPS, or role playing game as RPG is nearly universally understood, whereas shortening the word adventure to three letters on the Steam page doesn't really make a lot of sense in my eyes. Alright, look. The elephant in the room is this is another anime game that clearly is going to appeal and not appeal to certain people. I don't want to write off this game purely on what it tries to cater to, but instead talk about the ideas it touches on. I will revisit this point later on, but to at least be fully transparent, yes. This game definitely does the we're a cute anime game, there's nothing hiding here, smiley face. But I will say that statement doesn't spoil anything in this game as it is kind of implied just by these stats that some things are going to happen. Oh yeah, and just like Omori and Doki Doki Literature Club, the game even starts with a warning, which honestly, given the Windows boot aesthetic, this was a missed opportunity to turn this into a group policy screen. No matter, the point is, this game is weird, and honestly, you at least need a basic understanding of the internet for this game to make a single bit of sense. It sounds like I'm being overly dramatic, but I thought about it for a moment and realized this game's oversaturation of reference to the internet makes sense to me because of my own oversaturated exposure to the internet. I then tried to ignore the glaring fact that maybe it would be healthier for me to go to a park, sit and listen to the wind, or even go to the extreme of microwaving my phone, hitchhiking to the mountains, and become the Catskill Hermit.
momentary lapse of existential inquisition aside, perhaps a fair way of describing this game is Bo Burnham's inside, but for weebs. Ame is a girl who has hired you to be their stream producer, so yes, you are supposed to be the person helping her, not the person actually with the dream. She wants to stream and has the very lofty goal of a million subscribers before the month is up. Huh, <laughs> mm, yeah. At that rate, I should be approaching 50 million subs right now, but that's very clearly light years away from reality. But hey, it has happened before, and it is a video game. I don't expect the creators of the game to create a storyline that lasts a year and ends with Ame having even a tenth of what she wanted in just a month, because that might be boring. I'll discuss this topic much later, because I do have some comments to make, but all I'm going to say now is even PewDiePie didn't get his first million in a year. What you do in the game is basically tell your girlfriend what to do. There are occasional moments where she asserts some kind of autonomy, such as not wanting to stream one day, but these random events may vary. Without getting into spoilers just yet, there are other moments, but 99% of the time you will be telling Ame to stream at night, telling her what to stream, and maybe during the day telling her to do different activities. For instance, a day in the life of Ame may look like visiting a part of Tokyo, then streaming afterwards. Or another day may be doing things on the internet, such as scrolling through Twitter, or watching a film, then streaming. You have three time slots in a day. Most activities only take one, a few take two. However, there is a way to sort of get more time. For instance, one thing I did several times was go to some part of town in the morning, which would then bring me back to nighttime, then go out again, and that would take me to the next day with no effect on any of the time slots on the following day. However, this game does impose a bit of a strategy. While you can get multiple, and I mean a shit ton of endings in this game that are dependent on different variables and how successful you are, your goal is to get at least a million subscribers. While I can't exactly figure out the math of all of this, there are certain things that do help you over time. For instance, stream streak, or how often you stream. Streaming every day will build up a multiplier that will help your streams get more views. And given how certain topics will also net fewer or more viewers, you can combine these two in the late game to actually get some pretty good boost to your subscriber count. Now one time I was able to combine a streak bonus with a gamer bonus and a high follower bonus to gain 1.1 million subs in a day. It took me a bit to figure out if these statistics helped at all, but it does seem like they work for the most part. Though frequently, it has felt a bit random whether the stream will go viral or not. Though sure enough, if you want an easy way of getting subscribers, become a cam girl, break down camera, or even indulge in one or two conspiracy theories, though the last one does have the effect of stigmatizing your channel. At least on the outside, I find this game's presentation of YouTube at least a bit believable. I'll suspend my disbelief a bit since it is a video game that lasts 30 days, and maybe assume each day is like a week to a month. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest criticisms I have, is that if we take this at face value, it is pretty unrealistic to get a million subs off of one stream stream. Has it happened before? Probably? I I've seen some channels skyrocket in popularity, but if we assume it is a million subs over the duration of a month or even a full let's play of a game, then yeah, that has happened before and on many different occasions. While we're talking about getting famous, why not talk about another topic I know nothing about? Being famous. Your girlfriend not only wants to be a popular streamer, but she specifically wants to be an idol. Now, I know jack and shit about idols. In addition, I only know a few vague things about the J and K varieties of pop, but there are people who are idolized on the internet, and this is something I am aware of. Just in the YouTube space, has anyone watching ever heard of convention stories where famous YouTuber has a bunch of fans that want to meet them, and while having some pretty decent interactions with fans, has walked away with some weird interactions to say the least. Now consider even the nature of fangirling and... <coughs> Excuse me for a minute. <sighs> Stands and simps, you can fill in the gaps and see this is just an e-girl who wants to be famous under an anime aesthetic. The whole idol thing I can kind of give a shit less about, because it only colors the message of the game into a certain aesthetic while still maintaining themes that could work under a different aesthetic. In other words, just because this game does give off a similar outward appearance to Valhalla, also known as 11th Virginia of the Alpha Hall, there is something here. Now on that note, let me remind you of Valhalla's alternate name for a minute. 
very tongue-in-cheek. If you've played Valhalla, I argue it has more comparisons than you would think to Papers, Please, specifically in branching story design and the fact that both are about walking a mundane job. Following this, pour in some Blade Runner and give it a shot of Akira and you have a pretty good game and soundtrack. My point being, even though this is definitely an anime-influenced game, I think the game's ideas aren't restricted to only the anime aesthetic. The things that stood out to me with this game kind of fall into two groups. The first one is made obvious about two minutes into starting the game. This girl is kinda crazy. It's not really the anime yandere crazy, more so it is a mixture of ego, a decent amount of pride, and having this high expectation of being famous overnight. This is the girl who goes onto the internet and thinks she can make everyone love her. This is the girl who thinks the top of the mountain will be sunshine rainbows, and hell, maybe it is, but her expectations are unobtainable, as even the perfect rainbow with the perfect Hawaiian sunshine isn't enough. I'll elaborate on her craziness later as that deserves a special spoilered off section. So the second thing that stood out was the game's interesting depiction of internet fame. Now, one ending in particular kind of gets ridiculous, where it really indulges in the I've got a million subs now, I must be Kanye West type of attitude. Big mansions, big money, etc. And while the game itself actually lacks a currency system entirely, it isn't clear just how much money your live streamer girlfriend is pulling in. I think the message of the game is still told well without the system, but I do find that simulators need some form of currency in them, especially given how there's a bit of a plot line about having to pay rent this month. Simply put, famous people tend to get paid. So maybe if that was at minimum an extra stat showing your success, then that would be sufficient here. Let's get controversial. There was a controversy late last year because some Twitch earnings were leaked. XQC reportedly made nearly 8.5 million over two years, being the highest paid single person streamer on Twitch in terms of just payout by Twitch. This includes ads ran during his stream and earnings from Twitch's subscriber system. That wasn't the controversy, but instead, the controversy circled the streamer Hasanabi. My two cents, it was political. That's about it. But all that matters for this video is he reportedly made around 2.8 million in the same time frame. I don't care about the politics right now, I care about how much 7 figures is. Most people in America do not see 7 figures in their lifetime. So that is a lot of money, and especially a lot of money for two years of work. But is that actually a lot of money? That's a fraction of the money that, say, Jay-Z reportedly has after having a very successful music career and having money in different investments, along with plenty of other Hollywood celebrities. Point is, that money is the kind of money someone much, much more famous than a Twitch streamer will make during their career. Actual celebrities are known, and just how known? Enough where even granddad knows who they are. Never mind asking my grandfather, if I ask my mom who XQC or Hasnabi are, she might guess they are people on the internet, but I doubt she'll guess they're Twitch streamers. But if I ask her who Taylor Swift is, she'll know. Not only does she listen to her music from time to time, but Taylor Swift is relevant on a global scale that is beyond that of any standard internet celebrity. Or how about someone like Billy Joel? He sells out Madison Square Garden and could probably do it for a month straight. That is the sort of power that comes with his fame. In my opinion, no Twitch streamer right now could fill 20,000 seats in Madison Square Garden, even if they have 50,000 concurrent viewers, as this person would have to be famous enough where there would be enough of a concentration of fans in one area to do such a thing. In other words, statistically, even if you have a million fans, how many of them will live in the same area of venue services and also get tickets for said venue on the same night. So the point I'm making on this tangent is that you can make a lot of money having a big following, but that doesn't entirely mean you're A, making a shit ton of a lot of money, or B, even famous enough where someone will know who you are. So, how famous really would your girlfriend streamer be at a million subs? About as famous as Adam Neely, who you probably know if you're into music. Let's just correct the whole thing. Blame it on Jorge, who you probably only know if you're into lost media. Our story begins in 2004. Frederick Knudsen, who you probably only know if you've seen Down the Rabbit Hole. We recorded directly onto a computer from a video game console. Lazy Game Reviews, who you probably only know if you're into old DOS computers. Saying hi to folks and then just setting up all of the tables. And Summoning Salt, who you probably only know for Synthwave speedrun videos. 
Nomad was right behind him with the 721. And look, these are channels I know. There's plenty of million sub and up channels on YouTube nowadays. It isn't like what it used to be in 2012. Perhaps that is my main complaint with the fame aspect of this game. The first month and really only month you get to play the game is focused on just getting a million subs. Once you do that, you can keep going to see how far you get, but I didn't find more content that was specific to say passing 2 million, 3 million, or 4 million million subs. I think what would have been nice is, in line with your streamer girlfriend's ambition, have a second month where you have to get to 10 million subs, then a third month where you have to get to 100 million. I know I complained earlier about how obtainable these were, but if we're gonna go all the way in making sure that this is a game and a wild fantasy, let's go further. Hell, it would have been funny if a fourth month was a billion subs, and then a fifth month was 10 billion. This streamer has 10 billion subscribers, but there are only 7.9 billion people in the world. One of the more interesting things this game does is this Twitter timeline feature because it shows the two-faced nature of Ame. I'm not saying everyone on the internet is two-faced to the degree this character is, but I think most people do show different faces in different scenarios. There's a difference between being among friends and being in a meeting with your boss. Let's add in the elements of the internet. From the start, some people do try to refine their own appearance when presenting to a greater number of people. Sometimes the version someone shows is a romanticized or even dramatized representation of reality. This is a bit of an assumption, but what shows the point I'm making in that last sentence is there's Jerry Seinfeld, the comedian, and everything his life entails when not on stage. And then there's Jerry Seinfeld, the character that represents Jerry Seinfeld in a dramatized and exaggerated version of his life. But either way, an internet personality is, at best, a more boring version of their internet persona, while at worst, well, you get the picture. Now this disingenuous facade that is seen in the game is two-sided. As I said, it is a bit of a dramatization of how different someone can be when they aren't on camera, but it also represents feelings towards having to play this character. Without a doubt, there's people who genuinely like the character they play, while there are people who hate it. One example I've read recently was about George Carlin, who shockingly is the comedian known to get arrested for saying seven words on TV that I say on a regular basis. Ah, tits. I've only said three of them so far in this video. Well, anyway, I found out George Carlin replaced Ringo Starr in his role as the narrator for Thomas the Tank Engine and reportedly loved his time working on the children's show. While it may even be a character that Carlin plays in his stand-up routines, in either instance, you do have a man putting on a performance as a character, be it the character who says cocksucker on television, or the character who calmly tells a story to children. Of course, someone may be lying, as you're probably not going to hear I fucking hate streaming all that much from someone who makes their living from streaming. Then again, you don't have access to private thoughts, but this is what I like about this Twitter timeline feature. Though my advice, Ame shouldn't post her unfiltered thoughts on Twitter no matter how fucking private this account is, but that might just be me. All I'm saying is that Ame hates her job and just wants to get rich and famous quick. Her fantasy is to be the internet angel, but in reality her intention is to be the internet god. On the surface, she is a pure angel that the internet will fall in love with, so long as you go down that route in the game. While underneath, she is a Machiavellian. One of my favorite things about games with multiple routes is it pretty much presents the same story, but from different angles. Or to rephrase it, you start with the exact same starting conditions, but through the alternate revelations of the story, you learn more about the starting conditions themselves. What I mean is things like setting, theme, but what is important for this video, the character. Yes, different things happen on these different timelines, but was Ame destined to become Ame Jones, the conspiracy nut? Clearly, there's things that happen in the game that lead to the route of becoming a conspiracy nut, but there were things already present in the conditions around Ame to bring her to this path. For starters, before becoming a streamer, she had access to the internet. As is revealed in alternate timelines, she lives on the internet even before becoming a streamer. In addition, she may be a bit impressionable and pretty vulnerable, again revealed through different events that may or may not happen in one playthrough. So was she destined to fall down a conspiracy rabbit hole? Well, no? But the conditions were there. So the fact that this game allows for as much of a chance for Ame to become a conspiracy nut as for Ame to become a cam girl does make multiple playthroughs of the game rewarding. But now, let's talk about Ame. Ame is crazy, but how do we define crazy? 
Let's simply define it as the idea of being different, but to a degree that doesn't fit a normative society. In other words, we'll say she's crazy if she believes a child's blood is the solution to eternal life. So case one, Ame spends all her time inside. No, I, I think we can say that isn't crazy at all, especially given the past couple of years. Case 2. Ame is in need of validation. Okay, this really isn't it. Most people want to feel validated. Case 3. Ame thinks she can change the internet. This is crazy, but in the same sense ambition is crazy. It's the same way that someone like Steve Jobs was crazy, but is it crazy if it happens? All this is is a girl wanting to be famous, so this is fairly normal too. Alright, so what actually makes her outwardly crazy? Well, in reality, it probably comes down to her being very clingy. In my opinion though, I've heard more stories than we actually see with Ame, but it is very clear she is insecure. So in reality, is Ame actually crazy? No. With an asterisk. You see, I've been describing the first few days of Ame. But by day 30, or any of the endings in the game, there's a good chance that the shell keeping Ame sane has cracked. There's two endings where she gives up streaming because she loves you, though they are both out of an obsession over you. Then there's the ending where she has a meltdown on the internet and becomes a killer. Then there's the ending where she has what I guess is the existential crisis of the century. And then there's the ending where she starts a cult. That's it. She now believes she is the internet god. But of course, how does she get to this point? I went through that checklist to establish how Ame is not crazy in the beginning, but could become crazy given enough time. I did this really to make a point about real life people. You see, I think there's more people than we wish to recognize who are easily influenced by others. It is preached all the time about people having autonomy in their lives, which is something people do have. But more often than not, I feel like I see people give away this autonomy to do things that don't make a lot of sense. If I may get political again, I believe we see this time and time again, and right now is no more apparent. Take that statement as you will, but even in the scope of online entertainment, I've mentioned the dark side of fandoms briefly, though it has previously been in the context of fans of video games. It goes without saying, some people will become obsessed with people they perceive to be real and genuine, never mind if it is on the internet, and such obsession may turn very very unhealthy. This game has an entire ending that circles around this fact. Ame is seen in just the matter of a few days, falling into utter chaos and losing her mind because she snapped at her audience. This was the ending I got to that made me decide to do this video. I hadn't completed more than maybe three or four endings when I got to this whole ending. My initial reaction to when this ending started was, oh fuck, she's about to ruin her career. But as this ending went on, and on, and on, I realized the developers weren't going to just give an open and shut ending on this particular condition. A few of the endings in this game are fairly brief, such as any of the ones where you do have at least a million subscribers and meet some kind of condition. Then there's certain endings that are only accessible purely because of certain things that happen in the game. Arguably, an ending like the Cam Girl one is like this, but the actual ending itself is very brief. Then there's the cult ending that is a bit more complex to get to, has an entire livestream dedicated to it and ultimately ends once Ame has proclaimed the founding of her religion. And then there's this ending that all starts because Ame is overwarped and stressed, ends up breaking down on stream and continues to fall further and further from where she once flew. While the ending no doubt plays up the Ame tropes, it is at this point where the darkest ending for Ame occurs. So the point I want to make, and the reason I want to make this video, is because this ending made me think about a few things. 
While, yes, I think it is valid to say that it was Ame who ultimately snapped and did all the things that led to the downfall of her career, I want to reiterate how no idol exists. The image of an idol being this flawless entity that does no wrong and the world revolves around it cannot exist as a human. I'm not interested in peddling a religious message where at the end of this I'll turn around and say someone needs a lord and savior. But if anything, I do want to say there is a problem in worshipping individuals. In addition, I think it is a two-way road. While it is clear that from time to time, people do think certain individuals are gods among men, does the person being idolized begin to buy into it? In my opinion, no one is inherently special to a degree that puts them above humanity. In the context of this game, no one can be the internet angel as such a thing would be undo the false pretense of a mask or veil, and even the angel can let fame go to their head. So now I have encountered an issue with this video that I wish to address right now. I think this game deals with an important idea. At a minimum, it can start a discussion. But what I am having a problem with right now is there is too much this game has gotten me to think about and write about. I'm on the seventh page of my script. I've edited stuff down, and yet there's a few things I still want to mention. I haven't touched on the actual overdosing theme in this game yet, and really all the drug stuff here. I also haven't touched on my criticisms of the game itself, of which there are plenty. I want to get this video out right now, and I am not going to try to edit a 40 minute video. So instead, I'm going to put a pause on this video. If you want to see the next part of this video, go ahead and subscribe as I will be finishing and releasing part 2 within the next month. Because all my criticisms of the game are in the next video though, all I'll say right now is if you find this game interesting so far, then be sure to check it out.